Hey guys, welcome back. This is Chad with Take One Film and Video here in Nashville, Tennessee. And today we're going to be talking about the Sony FR7 PTZ camera. So let's jump right into it. So what we have here is a basic setup of the Sony FR7 PTZ camera itself. We have the RM IP500 controller. Now this controller has been around for a while. This camera is brand new. We just got it in the last couple of days and it is hot off the press. So uh, we are just learning about this camera, figuring it all out. So I'm gonna share some of what I've learned with you all and uh, maybe help some people that are trying to configure this for the first time uh, overcome some of the challenges that we had. So real quick, let's talk about the camera itself. The Sony FR7 is a unique PTZ camera because it actually does not come with the lens. The lens was added on. This is a, a, a G series Sony lens, a 28 to 135 millimeter. And uh, we put this lens on here and you can choose different lenses based off your throw and so forth. But you do need a uh, internally motorized lens like a G series lens because the focus, uh, the iris um, and zoom, those are all going to be servo driven. So you need a lens with an internal servo uh, and that's how you control it with your controller. But uh, the camera itself is the only thing that comes with the PTZ. You get the, the body, you get the motors, and you get the, the back here. Now the back is essentially uh, like an A7 uh, S3 or really an FX6. And, and Sony has told me that really the way to think about this is that it's an FX6 um, imager mounted onto a PTZ camera. Uh, and it's more than that, but that's essentially uh, what it is. Uh, so you get the full frame sensor, uh, you get the cinema look, you get the interchangeable lenses. That's what really makes this PTZ different because no one else has really offered that right now. And so this is pretty cool. So let's take a little closer look at the lens itself. Um, the lens mounting is actually um, pretty slick here and I'm going to uh, see if I can force it open a little bit. Probably shouldn't do that. But uh, what makes this cool is this lens has a 15 millimeter rod system where you can actually support it uh, from the camera itself. So the camera, I'm sorry, the PTZ camera comes with the rods and the support mechanism. So as you put different lenses on, uh, you have a support here that will attach to the lens and uh, just give it some frontal support so that you take the weight and the pressure off of your, uh, your lens mount. I think this is a great idea. And so if you put on larger lenses, uh, this is gonna be even more important. So you wanna utilize this, but what a great idea to do that and to be able to balance the camera because different lenses are gonna be different sizes, different weights. There is a release here on the back of the camera and uh, that gives you a pretty good latitude of, of uh, forward and back motion. And in fact, you can see, if I can get my camera back here, uh, there's a little um, there's a little slide, uh, a ruler there where you can, uh, you know, maybe preset certain lenses to certain places so you can always get back there quickly. But uh, anyway, Great idea, and um, it came together really well. Let's take a quick look on the back. The back is pretty standard with what you expect, but a couple of cool things. You've got your LAN, it communicates uh, Sony Visca over LAN. Um, you actually have a time code input, SDI output, HDMI output, and a gen lock, which is pretty cool. So you can use this in a professional or broadcast environment, multi-camera, and actually gen lock your camera so you don't have to use frame sinks or other external things which cost you delay and frames and things like that. Another uh, thing that's pretty unique is the fact that it has a balanced audio input. It's a five pin XLR, so uh, we're gonna assume that that's gonna accommodate a stereo input uh, on one connector. And um, the reason for that is, is this camera records internally. And we're gonna show you that in just a second. Uh, there is an option port here. I'm not exactly sure what that's for. Probably serial Visca. Sony is uh, really good about backwards legacy capability uh, with previous generations. So I'm thinking that's probably gonna be a serial control uh, for, for Visca, um, I'm just guessing. And uh, then you got a couple of other things here. You got an optical port. So if you want that 12 gig output, um, you've got an optical, or I'm sorry, not an optical port, an SFP slot so that you can put optical or something else in there that you wanna do. Uh, this, uh, there's a couple of pins here that's gonna be really important too, which I'll get into uh, as well uh, for the setup. Finally, you have two record slots. And this is really set up for uh, CF Express cards. You, I believe you can also use um, high-speed SD cards as well. 
you might be limited on uh, the format you can use, perhaps maybe HD only. But this will uh, accommodate two slots. So I haven't looked into it yet, but I'm assuming you could do continuous record perhaps. Uh, once you fill up a card, the other one starts, you can keep going perpetually. Uh, but uh, that is pretty cool. So this really is set up not just for a live PTZ presentation, but to actually record. Uh, and there is actually um, encoding out of this camera as well. So if you have a maybe a corporate setup where you wanted to record someone and stream out, this actually has a built-in streaming encoder uh, into the camera. So this, this PTZ is packed full of options uh, for different applications. So uh, very cool, lots of, uh, lots of thought went into this camera and so far pretty impressive. So our setup here is over traditional land. We're using the Visca over IP and we're using it here with the RM IP500. This controller has been out for quite a while and one of the things that we learned the hard way is that you have to update the firmware on this controller. We just received this brand new from Sony. It has version 2.1 firmware and 2.1 firmware will not talk properly with the FR7. So if you are trying to set up this camera with an IP500, make sure your IP500 has version 2.2 firmware. One of the other tricks for this is, uh, I did not find this anywhere in the manual, uh, but uh, Sony support helped me figure this out. The setup uh, pins down here, there's four pins, and they all default to the off position. But if you're going to use IP or Visco over IP, uh, number three has to be in the on position. So it comes default with everything in the off position, but number three will have to be in the on position. This is what allow you to have IP control uh, for your camera with the IP500. Now finally, there is, um, this is just a Windows laptop here. I've connected this with uh, my MacBook Pro over Chrome and uh, it works just as fine as well, but you'll need this to do an initial setup. Uh, really, it's easier if you put the camera on a um, on a network with DHCP and hands out IPs. It's made uh, set up default for DHCP. It's looking for you to give it an IP address. And there's a little cheat code here on the door. Um, it actually has a QR code. So if you scan that with your tablet, I tried it with a, oh, an iPad mini and it didn't format correctly. I couldn't actually get the page to format right. So. That didn't work too, too well, but it works perfectly on a Windows tablet or a MacBook Pro. And you can configure uh, the whole camera. You can set static IPs. You can do all that you want to do uh, here with the GUI. So anyway, lots of options, lots of functionality, but basically you have a Cinema FX6 camera on a PTZ head and you get to pick the lens you want. And um, that makes it awesome. But you do have to buy the lens separate. I, I think uh, everybody probably knows that, but you do have to buy the lens separate from the camera. So um, make sure to get what you want there, but uh, make sure it's compatible. Uh, the G series all seem to work, but you do want to make sure that those servos are there so that you actually have uh, the zoom and focus capability on the camera. So anyway, that's a quick overview. Again, if you guys have any questions about the F FR7, maybe uh, having some challenges yourself, or want to look to add an FS, FR7 into your inventory, give us a call. 1-877-81-TAKE-1 is our number. You can email us at mail at take1.tv. Thank you guys so much for your time. Hope you guys have a good one.